Greetings, this is Xbox Ahoy, and this is episode 27 of my Modern Warfare 2 Weapon Guides. In this episode we're covering the AUGH bar, the fourth available light machine gun. The AUG is a fully automatic weapon, unlocked at level 32. The Armée Universal Gewehr, or Universal Army Rifle, was one of the first successful bullpup assault rifles, with a weapon action and magazine behind the trigger, closer to the shooter's shoulder than in a traditional design. It's an Austrian weapon, manufactured by Steyr. The first AUG variants were designed in 1977, with the H-Bar following some time after. The AUG assault rifle entered service with the Austrian military in 1979. It fires the NATO standard 5.56 by 45mm intermediate cartridge, typical for an assault rifle or light machine gun. The AUG is normally seen with its integrated Swarovski telescopic sight, but this is not present in Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer. Instead, the backup iron sights are used. The H-Bar variant of the AUG is essentially the same as the standard variant, with a longer and heavier barrel designed for sustained automatic fire without loss of accuracy. 42 round magazines are used instead of the more standard 30. The AUG H-Bar combines some of the best features of both the LMG and assault rifle categories. You have the high power of the LMGs, particularly at range, with the reload and handling of an assault rifle. Recoil is present but relatively mild, and can be handled at longer ranges by burst firing. It is classified as an LMG in-game, so your mobility and aim speed will suffer when compared to an assault rifle. Compared to the other LMGs, the magazine capacity is less generous too. At just 42 rounds, it's about the same as a typical assault rifle with extended mags. Nevertheless, with the right loadout, the AUG is a formidable weapon, with sufficient firepower to tear through an entire team. The grip is the first attachment unlock, reducing the recoil of the AUG when firing full auto. This will help at middle to long ranges, but at a distance you will still need to burst fire to be effective. In any case, with the grip you will remain accurate with automatic fire out to a further distance than without, so it's a worthwhile attachment. The iron sights of the AUG are a little unusual, so some may prefer to use the alternate optics. The red dot is the first unlocked optic, giving you a slightly better view on target. It helps a little, but once you're used to the iron sights, I think the optics are a waste of an attachment. The holographic sight is similar, the only difference being the reticle and frame of the optic. Both the holographic and the red dot are very usable, but I'd strongly recommend you stick with the iron sights, coupled with an altogether more useful attachment. I'd also recommend you steer clear of the silencer, as it will reduce the damage you do at all ranges, making the AUG a 3-hit kill with stopping power instead of 2. Unlike the MG4, the silencer does work as expected, and can be used with certain playstyles, but there are better weapons to use silenced. The heartbeat sensor is as you'd expect, and can sometimes be useful in seeking out the enemy. You can't detect everyone, but in team games, one member of the opposing team without Ninja can give away the general position of the remaining enemies. The long-range optics are ineffective on the AUG. The recoil isn't too bad, but when used with the ACOG or Thermal, it's magnified to the point where it's much harder to stay on target. I'd recommend pairing the ACOG with a grip via bling if you must use it. But even then, it's not a particularly effective combination and you've sacrificed your first perk slot, which could have been used for something altogether more useful. Some swear by the grip and thermal combination, but it didn't suit my playstyle. To be effective with such a setup, you'd need to adopt a more stationary position overlooking a choke point, but I found the AUG to be more effective as a mobile weapon. FMJ is quite effective when coupled with LMGs as their lack of damage drop off at range means they can be quite deadly through cover at any distance. Stick with FMJ long enough and you'll unlock extended magazines, 63 rounds instead of 42. This makes the weapon a little more comparable to the LMGs as far as capacity is concerned, but with the AUG's fast reload, magazine size isn't a major problem. Either FMJ or the grip would be sensible choices. FMJ will net you more overall kills when enemies are behind cover, while the grip will enhance your accuracy at long range. I'd recommend FMJ for smaller maps where recoil isn't going to be a major factor, and the grip on maps with longer sightlines, such as Wasteland or Estate. 
the AUG suits an aggressive style of play, but suffers from the poor mobility and aim speed of the LMG class. It works well against groups of enemies, especially when you can take them by surprise. It might take a while to get into position, but if you can flank the enemy, you'll be able to do some serious damage. When moving with the AUG, it's best to take things slowly as you approach. Be ready for an engagement if necessary, and be ready and aim down the sights when approaching choke points and likely encounters. After you fire, it's best to keep moving, unless you anticipate more enemies moving to your revealed position. If you are expecting an attack, make sure you are firing from a covered position. It will tilt the odds in your favour. Don't be afraid to fall back if you feel like you're getting overwhelmed. If you need a reload, it's better to do it out of the open. Once the coast is clear, continue moving forward, slowly closing the vice. Ideally driving the enemy into a spawn lock or pushing them against your teammates in a painter-like movement. With patience and good awareness, you can push through entire teams. The element of surprise should be part of your strategy, but once broken, you can still force the enemy into your sights on your own terms by pushing forward with good use of cover. Sleight of Hand Pro is a must, bringing the aim speed in line with an SMG without the perk, and allowing you to cope better in situations where you are caught in an unexpected engagement. Scavenger isn't usually needed, as you get more ammunition than you would with a typical assault rifle. 126 rounds by default. Even without scavenger, you don't have to worry about running out too often. Packing a decent close quarter secondary can round out the AEG's abilities and make the ammunition supply even less of an issue. Despite the poor mobility of the AUG, I'd advise against lightweight as you'll find it much harder to kill enemies quickly, so stopping power is a good choice. It will grant you two hit kills at any distance and enable you to tackle larger groups of enemies before they have time to react. For your third perk, Ninja is again the best all-round choice granting you the ability to move silently near enemies and concealing your position. As an alternative, steady aim can work to improve the close range ability of the AUG when you're caught unawares and don't have time to aim. Sitrep works well paired with FMJ, as it will give you an idea of where the enemy are and allow you to take out claymores through walls. My usual preferred equipment are stuns and semtex. Stuns are faster throwing than flash grenades, which is very useful for an assault class, and Semtex makes a useful tool to flush enemies out of buildings and around corners. Grenades can also be used in a defensive manner as well as an aggressive way. If you need to retreat, to reload or to take cover, throwing a Semtex towards the enemy will deter them from pushing forward towards you for a moment, giving you precious seconds to fall back and recover. As far as your killstreaks are concerned, I found the counter UAV to be very useful with the AUG. It's very attainable at just four kills, and the removal of the minimap for the opposing team essentially means your entire team has the benefit of using a silenced weapon, in addition to denying the enemy the use of their UAVs. While the counter UAV is up, you can effectively push into the flank or rear of an enemy team, while they may still think you're in a different position altogether. Once behind the enemy, you can quite often take a few of them out before the element of surprise is lost. Beyond the counter UAV, the killstreak choices are yours. I was using the attack helicopter and Pavlo, as both are AI controlled and can be called in quickly. Although Harriers are normally more effective, the helicopter persists for a longer duration, and more usefully you can queue the Pavlo to follow the attack helicopter. You don't want to have two killstreaks in the air at the same time if you can avoid it. You'll net fewer overall kills and the air support will be active for a shorter period of time overall. Queuing the attack helicopter and Pavlo will give you two continuous minutes of air support coverage if not shot down. Plenty of time to push the advantage while you're on the ground. Keep up the pressure and the air support will leave your quarry distracted, making it easy for you to pick off enemies the helicopters can't reach. The AUG is a high-powered weapon, dealing two hit kills at all ranges when paired with stopping power. It's as controllable as most assault rifles and effectively comes with extended magazines for free. It does come with a mobility penalty, but for the patient player with a good awareness of enemy location, the AUG can be used to aggressively contain the enemy while slowly driving them back. The quick time to kill and healthy magazine size means that once you're in a position, you can tear through groups of enemies, hold a spawn lock, and rack up some impressive killstreaks while doing so. Thanks for watching, this has been Xbox Ahoy. Join me next time when I'll be covering the fourth shotgun, the Ranger. 
Farewell for now. <laughs>